I'm Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. I'm running for Texas State Representative to represent you in the legislature. This is HD 18, which is Liberty, San Jacinto, Hardin, and East Montgomery County. And what I want to talk about today is corrections. I worked in corrections. I was a correction officer. And I think we need to recognize the valuable service and contributions of our correction officers. And uh, we need to look at ways we can help them. We have a lot of people here in this, this uh, house district who work in corrections. As I said, I worked in corrections. I actually was a correction officer uh, in the Cleveland Correction Center, uh, which was GEO at the time. It's gone through different uh, iterations. I think now it's going to be under TDCJ. Uh, but, you know, it's difficult. It's, it's really difficult uh, working in corrections. And sometimes I don't think that the services and contributions of our correction officers are valued the way they should be. And like I said, uh, with my background in corrections officer, not as a correction officer, not only did I work as a correction officer uh, here in Cleveland, Texas, uh, but my father was a prison chaplain. So actually, when I first came to Texas, I came to the Jester uh, unit, I guess, in the uh, Richmond Rosenberg area. It's probably changed a lot since I came down here. So I lived on, uh, basically our family, they had some housing units on, uh, on the grounds of that uh, uh, prison. So uh, my father's a prison chaplain for a while and I've done a lot of uh, uh, services, you know, uh, religious services, chapel services for the prison. So I'm very familiar with <laughs> how the correction system works. And uh, as I said, it's, it's a challenging job. And uh, since I worked in corrections, I care about our correction officers. We should care about everybody but I can identify it more than other people because I have experience in corrections. Also, uh, my one of our associate pastors here and uh, my chaplain assistant, I went to school and uh, I graduated from Sam Houston State University. And uh, so I'd always go out by the walls and the prisons there. Uh, and I've worked as a, in ministry, in Christian ministry, in uh, our church, King of Saints Tabernacle. We had a ministry uh, in the Polinsky unit. So... Uh, with my experiences as a uh, in corrections, um, like I said, I think they should value. I wonder if TDCJ or some of these prison prisons value their corrections officers the way they should. Now, I worked for a while, and what happened is I decided I need to go back to school. And it's like, well, can you work with my schedule? I like to have Tuesdays and Thursdays off so I can, you know, continue my education. And it's like, no, no, either you're 100 percent for you know this, which is geo at that time, or you know just got to resign. And I made a better decision because now I got a doctorate. I needed to advance my, my education, which I did. And it's like, well, what's the, what's the big deal? You know, they always need people working there. And it's like, I understand why they couldn't work with me on my schedule. And, of course, uh, being a correction officer there, I mean, these long hours. I worked 6 p.m. to 6 o'clock in the morning. And there's a lot of challenges dealing with the inmates, honestly. Um it's, it's a difficult and challenging job. And for a while, it's like, well, these people aren't going to have air conditioning. And, uh, well, you know, they're, they violated the norms of society and they, they're criminals, they deserve it. But it's like, but our corrections officers have to work in that environment. So that's changing. Uh, but we need to, uh, you know, it, we should justly compensate uh, our corrections officers. I mean, this is criminal justice. They're playing an important role. Uh, in justice being served, but also protecting society. And uh, we need to acknowledge their contributions and support them. And, you know, if they have any needs or concerns for speaking to people out there in corrections, and I win as state representative, and you tell me, well, this is what we feel like is our concerns, what's going on, we feel like it's not right. You know, I'll listen to your voice because it's like, okay, I can empathize. <laughs> I can empathize. Because I worked as corrections, and I worked in corrections. I know how difficult and challenging it can be, and I think we need to to support our corrections officers. Uh, and, you know, make it better for them. You know, the quality of life on the job and, and safety and and compensation for what they go through. It's uh, it's kind of funny. You're in there. You know, it's kind of interesting when you're when you're in prison. You actually the the the, uh, uh, the offenders are from you know wide cross section of life. You know. They're not like all the you know, Frankenstein monsters, weirdos. I mean, some of them are. Uh, but, I mean, just, you got to implement the rules. And, uh, you know, it's like, oh, you know, it's like this one person, I was, I was cleaning out this, well, I was actually inspecting a, 
you know, Saul. It's like, oh, you're, 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 you're persecuting me. And it's like, look, I don't even know who you are. I don't even care to know who you are. I got a clipboard. They assign me this, this uh, cell number to inspect the cell. It's nothing personal. It's, it's, I'm just doing my job. And if you don't like it, well, you shouldn't put yourself here in the first place. Uh, but we need to support our correction officers. Like I said, it comes with these challenges. And uh, honestly, when I was working at G uh, Geo, you know, they work, they'll work you every single day because they're, they're, uh, uh, they're not manned the way they ought to be. Uh, but it's like, it's like, well, I mean, if you don't have enough employees here, then why can't you be flexible with them? Like, you know, let me have some time off so I can continue my education, things like that. So the gist of the matter is if you want somebody to stand up for you and fight for you and your interest in Austin as a correction officers, as a correction officer, uh, I will do it with my experience and background in corrections. Uh, but this election is, uh, it's the Republican primary and election day is March 5th. Early voting is February 20th. So if you want to have a voice in Austin as, a, as, as an employee of the, you know, TDCJ and as a correction officer, then consider voting for me and letting other, let other people know. Uh, so I can take care of you. And that's what it's about. I think that we need to take care of our corrections officers. And, uh, I mean, I really felt like while I was working there, they could have done better. <laughs> you know, it's like, man, I make a lot of sacrifices. It's, I mean, going in there and, uh, uh, you know, you got to make sure the rules are enforced and these people, uh, sometimes, what they, what they was the expression? It's like herding cats sometimes. <laughs> and uh, all the challenges and difficulties we have. So, uh, March 5th. 2024. Vote for Dr. Stephen Andrew Missick. Uh, if you're in corrections and you want to have a voice in Austin and have your concerns addressed and problems you face, solutions provided, then vote for Dr. Missick. Uh, like I said, early voting is February 20th. Just get out there, let the, get the word out, and vote so we can have change, so that we can have somebody that's going to fight for our corrections officer, somebody with a background in corrections. So thank you, and God bless you.